Upgrading vital components in your system can seem like a daunting task on the surface. I mean, the graphics card and CPU are two of the uh, more expensive things in most PC builds, and it'd be a shame to miss out on a bit of performance on account of software conflicts, which are often the things you'll run into when upgrading platforms especially. So for this video, we've partnered with MSI to discuss the do's and don'ts when upgrading your PC. I'm gonna show you two demonstrations. First, a graphics card upgrade, and then a CPU upgrade with a new motherboard. The parts in your desktop computer may be in slightly different sizes or maybe in slightly different places, uh, but you should be able to to identify them since each has a distinct look. So let's kick things off with the easier of the two, the graphics card. These aren't difficult to swap on the surface, just a few thumb screws, a clip, and uh, that's actually about it. Graphics card swaps take literally a few minutes at worst, and that's what's so great about this kind of upgrade. It's easy on the surface. However, there are still things to watch out for, particularly if you're upgrading from an AMD card to an Nvidia one or vice versa, as is the case here. So this system is sporting an MSI GTX 760. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome, but it is a bit old. I think we can agree there and I'm interested in upgrading it to something a bit more modern, say this RX 5700 XT. Nice, but it isn't a simple plug and play. I've got Nvidia drivers already installed on this machine and abruptly swapping to something foreign, so to speak, can create long-term stability issues for both gaming and productivity workloads. As such, the surefire peace of mind solution is to completely remove any trace of NVIDIA drivers just prior to the hardware swap. Now you could do this manually, which would take some time, or you could use a program called DDU, which has a one-click solution for upgrading graphics cards. This button here, which should say something like clean and shut down, is the one you'll want to click. It'll wipe any trace of current drivers and shut down your system, at which point you can swap cards and power back on. From there, navigate to your GP manufacturer's download page and download the necessary file for installation. For NVIDIA cards, I like to install GeForce Experience first and let the software decide which driver is best from there. And for AMD, I like to use the Auto Detect tool, which will automatically find my card's relevant driver and install it. Now, if you're upgrading from, say, NVIDIA to NVIDIA or even AMD to AMD, DDU may not not be required, but I like to use it every single time I can just to be on the safe side. I'm swapping cards all the time when I'm testing things, and DDU prevents those unwanted headaches later on. Now a few additional things to keep in mind when upgrading graphics cards. One, make sure the new card fits into your current case. Some cards may be a bit too long. Two, make sure that the power supply is adequate. Some cards draw significantly more power than others, especially if you're upgrading from a weak card to a strong one, and you can calculate estimated load wattage using one of the PSU calculators linked below. And three, make sure your new card is getting enough airflow. Even the best designed actively cooled graphics cards can run a bit loud in a hot box. All right, the easier of the two upgrades is out of the way. Now, let's assume I wanna upgrade platforms. And what I mean by that is the motherboard, the CPU, and potentially the RAM. Now, in this demonstration, we're using the exact same system, so we're gonna be actually removing the graphics card we just installed, but bear with me. We'll be upgrading from an AMD FX system to an AMD Ryzen system, which means we are replacing all three parts, the motherboard, the DDR3 to DDR4, and the CPU. Now, compared to graphics card upgrades, platform upgrades require much more effort, not only because you'll need to disassemble quite a bit in your current build, but also because there are some serious driver incompatibilities involved when switching between platforms. Even though we're sticking with AMD throughout this upgrade, these two builds have completely different processor microarchitectures and completely different motherboard chipsets. And for that reason, I will completely reinstall Windows to avoid most of the trouble. Now, I know what you're thinking at this point. I mean, this is a huge hurdle, relatively speaking. See, drivers provide instructions for Windows to talk to our computer parts, and Windows has a feature that allows it to automatically upgrade platform drivers and update those drivers uh, for when we switch CPUs and even chipsets. However, the old drivers may still remain and instruct Windows to work with hardware that's not there anymore. I've even had systems straight up BSOD or blue screen of death from this very incompatibility. You can see performance hits in games, render times, transcoding times. There are so many potential issues that I almost always play it safe, especially when it comes to benchmarking. And unfortunately, we don't have something as simple as DDU, uh, which does most of that work for us. Instead, we have to 
do the work ourselves, so to speak, and reinstall basically everything on the primary storage drive. Now, first, we can prepare by backing up any data we'd like to keep, including documents, photos, and game save files. Then we need to prepare a boot disk or a USB flash drive uh, with a bootable installer from Microsoft's website. We're gonna use the Windows Media Creation Tool, which I have linked in this video's description. And with this tool, you wanna select the uh, USB flash drive, set that up as a boot device like so. And when this process is complete, power off your system. Now it's time to change some parts. Remove your graphics card, disconnect all cables, leading to your motherboard especially, uh, remove standoff screws, and carefully lift the motherboard out of the system. You should be able to lift from the edges if possible, uh, but if you have a large heat sink, you can grab it from there to help. Swap out rear IO shields and CPU air coolers if necessary, and repeat these steps in reverse to situate the new platform in the case. With the inside job finished, connect the USB boot device you created earlier and a keyboard and mouse. Now it's time to fire up the new build and spam that delete key. If done correctly, you should boot into your new motherboard's UEFI. In the boot tab, select the flash drive as the primary boot device, save settings and reset. And after the cycle, you should see a Windows logo and then this screen here. Navigate like so until you arrive at this page, select custom install and proceed to wipe your primary drive. This is the drive that will probably have all your important files on it. Again, make sure you've backed those up before doing this. And this is gonna be the drive that we're gonna call our boot drive, it's typically the fastest drive in our system. Once it's formatted, select it again and click next, at which point the tool will begin installing a fresh Windows operating system for you. And once your PC restarts on its own, remove the drive, run through the first time setup process, after which you'll end up on your empty desktop ready for new files again. So I know this wasn't the easiest procedure and reinstalling Windows isn't always fun. In fact, most of the time it's not fun at all, uh, but this should be done again for peace of mind's sake if upgrading from an especially old platform or if swapping an Intel one for an AMD one or vice versa. It'll prevent software related instability and ensure you're extracting the most from your hardware. Now, if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comment section below. I can't possibly cover everything related to upgrading, uh, you know, basic hardware in a single video, uh, but I'll help where I can, and I'm sure others will be able to as well if you comment. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. Consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.